Thrifty Gemini. I post weekly videos right here on my YouTube channel. And in this free motion quilting video, I'm gonna teach you how to do some stippling stitches. All right, so before we start sewing or stitching at the machine, let's quickly go over the design we'll be working on. Now, I call it stippling or meandering stitch. It also comes by a bunch of other names. It basically is this all over kind of doodling design, and you can do it in just a section like you see on this quilt. You can also do it on a larger scale and do it as an all over design, and I'll show you that in a bit. But let's go over three different scales of the same exact stitching design, okay? So this is what we call micro stippling, and as you can see, this is quite tight and quite small. I would never use this on an entire quilt because it's just gonna make the quilt way too dense not to mention it will probably take me forever to do. Okay so this is something you want to do in some smaller spaces to kind of push that fabric down and let some other elements pop around it but this is the same doodling design just really tight on a really tight scale so again that's called micro stippling okay. Now let me show you one that's a little bit more loose than that. This is just like a looser scale. You can see that there's more space in between the lines than on the previous sample. And this is just, again, your basic stippling. All right, and I just made it this size to fit into these little blocks. Now, if you really wanted to supersize it, you could do it as an all over design, like I mentioned earlier, on an entire quilt. So here's a quilt where I did the same stippling or meandering stitch, but I did it as an entire all over design of this entire quilt. So it's probably a little bit difficult for you to see the design on here. So let me flip it back to the backing and you can see the white on white. If I trace this line a little bit for you so you can follow and see, you can see how spaced out the little weaving in and out of the stippling or the meandering stitch is. There's a lot more empty space between it. The stitching lines are not gonna make the quilt as dense because they're not as tightly stitched together like we saw in the micro stippling sample. But this is another option you can see kind of looks like big jigsaw puzzle pieces. And so it's a really fun and easy way to finish a quilt project. And I know a lot of people struggle with it, but I'm here to show you how simple it is for you to give this a try. So let's head over to the sewing machine now and show you how to do some stippling or meandering stitches. All right, so before we start doing our stippling stitches here, let me show you how I've broken up my quilt sandwich into a few different boxes, because I want to show you the three different scales of the meandering or the stippling like I just showed you in the samples of the quilts I just showed you. So here's a smaller box for the micro stippling, and this still takes a few minutes to fill up even a small box like this, because you'll see how tight it is. And then this bigger one here is kind of for the mid-range scale of it, and then this larger one to show you on a bigger scale uh, how loosely you can make it as well. So we're back to regular free motion quilting, so I have a free motion quilting foot on here. I'm using just some 50 weight cotton, and I have my feed dogs down, and my stitch length set to zero on this machine. So let me start off like I normally would, just a little refresher, somewhere in a corner, bring that bobbin thread up, grab them both and come back down. In the same spot is fine and just take a few stitches. All right, so now let's do some micro stippling. Normally I would not recommend this for a beginner just because it'll probably drive you crazy like it does to me, but in some projects you'll find that it really does come in handy, especially if it's in some smaller spaces, all right? So let me just show you. Now, I have my machine set as far as the speed goes. The speed needs to be set depending on how tight you're doing the stippling because if we're going to be doing it really tight and close that means I'm not really moving too far with my quilt sandwich so if I have the speed set up high like I normally do the stitches are going to be way too small so I've already lowered it down and we'll see if I have to adjust it again but let me start off here you can see you're going to see that I barely move my hands I want a really tight micro stippling here And you can even get tighter than what I'm doing, but I think this is okay to show you. Move this thread out of the way. All right, so as you can see, I'm starting to do some stippling here. And all it is is doodling. This kind of comes easily to me because I was a doodler as a child. If you were, then you probably won't have a problem working this, you know, after you practice a little bit, obviously, just like anything new that you're trying out. But if you, you were not a doodler or doodling has never been your thing, then I suggest you grab a notebook and some paper and kind of start getting into the habit of doodling so then you can transfer that into your free motion quilting designs, right? So I'm moving a little bit. And the idea is to try and get round corners as you come around, little loop-de-loops, and just work your way around.
and you can see how much I've stitched, but how little of a space I've covered. And if you look at the quilt sandwich itself, it's like barely moving, barely. I think I've had enough of the micro stippling. You can see it takes a while to kind of cover up a full space, but it's good to just practice it out. And notice that I, again, I mentioned the speed is a big issue here when you're doing the different scales of the stippling stitches. Make sure that for something as tight as this, that the stitch speed, whether you have a speed control on your machine, you drop that speed a lot lower than you normally would, or uh, also that you can control it. If you have a machine where the speed control is only on your foot pedal, make sure that you slow things down a little bit since you're hardly covering any space every time you take one of these corners, okay? So I think I'll leave this one at that. And let's move over to the next box and show you how to do it on a little bit of a larger scale that's a little bit easier to do, especially for beginners. All right, so let's move down to our bigger box here. And again, you'll have to adjust the speed depending on how wide or how open your stippling stitches are gonna be. Okay. All right, so these are gonna be a little bit more loose. So I already know I'm gonna have to speed up the machine a little bit. So slow it down the tighter your stippling stitches are going to be. Because these are gonna be kind of a looser scale, I know that I can up my speed a little bit. And let's try that. And I like that speed there for me. So now notice, the key with meandering or stippling stitches is not to look at what you're stitching, but to look at where you're gonna go. I guess because the idea traditionally is that you don't cross your lines, but if you cross lines kind of like this, I'll show you. It's not the end of the world, you know? If you have your lines touch or cross, it's okay. And so it helps, obviously, if you're not talking and trying to do this at the same time. But let me just do a little bit more here. Try and concentrate a little bit more. And so keep in mind puzzle pieces, kind of curvy areas go straight for a little bit and then curve and there's no really set way to do it you don't have to have a specific pattern it's really organic and free-flowing all right so there you can see that's a lot more loosely stitched out than the little micro stippling that we did there. And I think this is easier for beginners to do. What I don't want you to do is to end up with pointy corners like this. If that's the design that you're going for, then go ahead and try to do that to all your turning points here. But the idea of the stippling or the meandering stitch is kind of like that it all flows nice and smoothly, okay? And I'll show you a little tip that I use on the next sample here. So let's cut our thread. And let's move over to the bigger rectangle here where I'm gonna show you on an even larger scale how to do it, okay. All right, so let's fill up. And you can see that with the bigger squares that I have here, the quicker it is to fill them in with the larger, more open scaled stitches, okay? So here I'm gonna make it go even a little bit faster because I'm really gonna be kind of swiping these bigger curves around and I need the machine to be able to keep up with me. Okay, so let's try this first. Nice big pieces, nice big chunks.
All right, so now let's go back to the tip I mentioned earlier about keeping these curvy edges here, like on every turn that you're making, to keep them a rounder instead of pointier. So let me show you a sample of what would be a pointy turn first. So these are like pointier, sharper turns, okay? And I find that with my students, the reason this happens is because they feel like they're going in one direction and they freak out like, oh, stop, you need to go in the other direction. And so instead of trying or, or concentrating and purposefully making it go round so that they can go out in whatever direction they wanna go, instead they just like stop and make it go choppy, okay? And do some straight lines. So in your head, you have to keep telling yourself something that will keep you reminded to go curvy. So you can say the letter U, the letter S, the letter C, something that's just gonna pop into your head and that you're used to writing, right? So that you can remember, okay, swipe it across like this. So if you're going here, instead of chopping it across, instead go out and round it, round it, round it. Just think of the letter U or the letter S or the letter C. And just before you think about taking any corners, just remember to round it out. This is gonna take some practice, but you can totally do it. All right, so let's end that there. Looks a little crazy since I have some other examples and mistakes I showed you in there, but that's fine. That's what quilt uh, practice sandwiches are for. But you can see if we take a look at the different samples that I have here, there is quite a difference, okay? It's the same type of stitching, but the scale is completely different. This is really tight and the speed has to be nice and low. And it will make your quilt a lot more dense, stiffer, and it's gonna take you longer to do. This one here is kind of a nice one to fill in empty spaces or negative space on your quilt. The stitch can be pretty much the same uh, um, speed that you use for most of your free motion quilting, I would say, at least that's the case for me and it's a little bit easier to do. You get more free room in here, so you have less of a chance of the lines touching themselves or, or crossing each other. And then we have the third one here where the speed needs to be increased because you're taking bigger swoops and lines. So I increase the speed on this, and then at the same time, you wanna make sure that you're working with a large enough piece. Because these are so spaced out and you have so much negative space, this is probably gonna be the easiest one to do because you don't have to worry about getting real close to the next line as you're quilting, so your chances of the lines meeting or crossing again are really, you're usually not gonna run into that problem if you're making it as wide and open as this, okay? Also make sure that you have a big enough space that you can take these wide swoops that you need to. I wouldn't do something as open as this on say a small little mug rug or something, you know? You wanna do this on where you have a lot of negative space and a lot of open space to fill up, okay? So here are your three meandering or stippling stitch samples. So that's it, that's all there is to doing your stippling or meandering stitches. It definitely is gonna take some practice. So like I said earlier, if you're not a doodler, take out some pen and paper and work on doodling, on your doodling skills. It comes really simple after you have some muscle memory built up and kind of remember to keep reminding yourself of the letter U, the letter C, or the letter S as you're taking those curves. I definitely hope that you'll give this stitch a try and that you'll take some pictures of your practice pieces. If you decide to do that, you can upload pictures directly to my Facebook page or you can also tag me on Instagram so I can see your works that way as well. Remember, if you're joining us new to my free motion quilting series, you can always click the graphic in the corner right there. That will take you to the full video playlist where all my free motion quilting videos live, okay? If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit it with a thumbs up below, share it across the different social media sites, and don't forget to click the subscribe button so you won't miss out on any of my future videos. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all next time.